spell it? Arau. 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 We got big train delays. First big train delay we've actually had. Party people, welcome back. Today we're in Geneva, or as us Americans like to say, Geneva. Real quick before we get started, this will be my last Switzerland video. I know, I know, I know. But I lost the footage for Locarn and Logano, the traditional Italian speaking regions of Switzerland, and I am highly disappointed in myself but it is what it is. All of our previous destinations in Switzerland were German speaking, and now we switch to a French speaking region, Geneva. First item on the must do list, take a tour of Lake Geneva. Hopefully we can get some views of Mont Blanc. We had some time before the next boat departed, so we decided to take a tour around the lake. We took this cool little walkway under the Mont Blanc Bridge or Pont de Mont Blanc. And while we were playing around with the swans that were swimming in the water, we got our first view of Ile Rousseau. This island was named after the philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau and serves as a park with a statue of Rousseau himself. The island itself sits in the Rhone River, which feeds Lake Geneva. That red and yellow flag you see flying on the bridge there represents the canton of Geneva. If you look closely, you can see it's emblazoned with the Imperial Eagle and the Key of St. Peter. Next, we head out over the Pont de Berg, or the Berg Bridge. So in case you hadn't figured it out yet, Pont equals bridge. We stroll up the lake promenade or Pont du Lac. We make our way back to the Mont Blanc bridge and we decide it was getting a little hot and uh, we needed some ice cream. A little Swiss mocha hit the spot. Before we knew it, it was time for us to board for our boat tour. We had plans later in the day to visit a popular castle, so we couldn't be on the water all day, so we did choose the shorter boat tour. The boat departs and we head across Lake Geneva to pick up a few more passengers. As we motor east northeast on Lake Geneva, we get our first glimpse of Jedu, the Geneva water fountain. Jedu basically translates into water jet. You know the boundary between Switzerland and France runs lengthwise of Lake Geneva. That's right, one side is referred to as Lake Geneva, the other, Lac Lomond. As I start to pan the camera east, I start to see the magnificent Mont Blanc come into view. Just check out those snow caps. It is the highest mountain in the Alps and Europe, standing at over 14,777 feet, or 4,809 meters. Mont Blanc translates to White Mountain in French. The mountain is situated close to the borders of France and Italy, and is owned by both countries due to a bilateral agreement. Make our way back to port, we pass the Fat de Paquis. This lighthouse is a popular relaxation destination for the locals and visitors alike. Just check out all of the people relaxing here. I also hear this place is pretty popular in the evening when the moon is lit. Okay, time to dock this thing and move to our next destination, the castle. We made our way to the train station and jumped the train to Vito. Vito is situated at the far eastern end of Lake Geneva, and it's just quicker to get there by train than it is by boat. We stepped out of the Vito Chillon train station and we were greeted with amazing views of Lake Geneva once again. Our destination, Chateau de Chillon, the Chillon Castle. Stop yelling at me, look. Just after a brief jaunt down the pathway there, we started to get a glimpse of the castle. Right away, you can tell how they turned this castle into a fortress with moats and slope walls. Le Don't Du Midi, that's the mountain range you see in the background there with the jagged edges. It means the tooth of the noon. We 
proceed to enter the castle with our Swiss travel pass, it does come in handy. His name is a little translation of castle built on a rock. Historians and archaeologists believe this castle dates back to the 10th century. This island castle is strategically placed on a narrow passage at the east end of Lake Geneva, which made it prominent on the trade routes and easier to control and defend against ship traffic. Many of the rooms in this castle house various furniture pieces, most of which date back to the 17th and 18th centuries. Give us a speech. Friends, Romans, Family countrymen, members. let me hear yours. The Dukes of Savoy used the castle as a prison in the 16th century wars of religion. Today you can still see chains that were used to hold prisoners. House of Savoy. Peter the second of Savoy. Look at this man. Classic. This particular room was used as a reception hall. Check out the coat of arms painted on the walls. These coat of arms represent the Bernese bailiffs that stayed in the castle during the Middle Ages. Yeah, let's go. Any help? And a friendly reminder, watch your head. The hallways are not that tall. This area may have been one of the chapels and dedicated to the patron saint of chivalry, St. George's. He's missing a hand. He most likely had a lance in his right hand, but went missing. The legend of St. George goes that he once tamed and slayed a dragon that demanded human sacrifices. Oh, there she is. We found a wood for the fire. As we walked through this castle, there was no mistaking this thing was a medieval fortress. We saw various wagons and carts, and they were all part of the arsenal. I can only assume this one looks like some kind of launch mechanism. You want to make it more difficult for your enemy to climb or dismantle the walls of your castle? Well, build them with a slope. That'll teach them. Yeah. The people in there. Holy cow. Old knight's armor. Oh. Castle wouldn't be complete without some armor for its protectors. 15th century chain mill. Might be 530, I don't know. Yeah. We noticed a lot of internal passageways in this particular wooden walkway here. You could just imagine a sentinel on guard protecting the castle from above. We were in there, but... And you need to be able to celebrate those victories. So why not a wine cellar? Wine. The castle has its own vineyard and stores its wine in these cellars to age. Shalom Domain still possesses a vineyard. They vineyard. still have the wine in here? Vineyard. Huh? It's, ex it's sold exclusively in the castle and for the benefit of the conservation and restoration work. So they only sell this wine here. Food cellar. She called it a vineyard. Wait. Just like that, we completed our castle tour and it was getting late and we had to get back because we had an early flight home. She's gonna wonder why her storage is so full one day. And she's gonna go through and be like, why do I have 15,000 pictures of the same lake? Oh, wait, not here at 
4.30 a.m. That will wrap this video up. Hope you enjoyed the content. Just remember, everybody needs a plan B. Cha-cha for now.